So lately I've been thinking about what is the actual purpose as to why we keep records of all the past versions of ourself and use that as a means to inform our present self about who we were so that we can compare that to who we are now to then create the future in a different direction, like perhaps from what the past was and perhaps even what our present moment is. When you think about like the past, present, and future are all like different things. It almost seems like the past is our less evolved version of ourself. Our present is like just where we are now. And the future is always going to contain some like higher version of ourself. When we think about it, it's kind of like an infinity symbol. So if you're always looking to inform yourself right now about the past and then returning that back to you in the form of like some lesson you learned as a means to then create the future in a way that is like you want to bring that to your present, you're basically like oscillating in between these different time sections of time. And so like who you are is really like three different points all at once simultaneously pointed in different directions. And this is like just how I've been thinking about this kind of stuff, because when you just observe your own actual reality of how it's working, you'll recognize that you're only like just going forward. You have your present moment and then you're just moving forward. And it's like a, an oscillation only going like one way. And you can look back to like the past moment, perhaps like, like five seconds ago and look, look back like that. But it, it really doesn't even exist in that way. It's like you're always just in the present. The past is a memory and the future in, in a lot of ways is just a projection of how you perceive it will be. But if you've at all been like paying attention, you'll, you'll recognize that the future is never how you envision it will actually be when your present actually goes to meet up with that future. And so like, what is the future anyway? What's like the purpose of that other than to create a trajectory or a projectional map of like expectation and the past is just a means to further build up our identity of who we are now. So these are some of the angles and mind lines I've been assembling towards this idea. And I really think it's important to think about this stuff because so many people I think are trying to just inform who they are now based upon all the versions of who they were. And oftentimes people's incapability to just be as present as possible will almost be like a condition as to why they're not somehow recapturing all the aspects of their past or filling in their like puzzle piece of who they are enough. So if you're not quite as present as you could be, it must mean that your past is somehow holding you back. And that's really like a, a belief system that's tossed around here quite a lot, especially like within the spiritual communities, that if you're not like doing the present moment good enough, you're still affected by like some fragmented point in time. And these things feel true. They feel like, yeah, it makes sense because even upon like further introspection of it, it, it does seem true. It seems like, oh, I'm not allowing myself to be exactly who I am because some version of myself wouldn't like allow me to be this way. And so it does seem like it really is the past. But if you're always bringing those things in like a global variable to like tie into your present moment, then you're making it more real than you really need it to be. Because if you just cut off that connection to the past, then there is no past and present to compare to. You're just your present moment. So if you're just your present moment and you don't have a connection to the past at all, then like there is no comparison narrative between like two versions of yourself. And I think that's what causes a lot of people problems is they have all these different versions of themselves of not only who they think they are, but who like their parents think they were or their friends or like their first relationship or their first job interview or all these different points in time, which mean the most to us. And we collect all these things as variables and just like store them in the background of our space and use that to suspend our, our current point of view of who we think we are now. And then we somehow expect that the world should just automatically adjust to our conditions that we've aligned. But oftentimes, true change requires you to like shift around so many variables of who you think you are that you almost have to delete a bunch or remap and rehash different ones or throw ones away or make new ones. And then the world starts to align in a different way that actually benefits you. And so 
the past is is really an illusion in the sense that it's only there in the limited granularity that what you want to actually like view it as. You can choose to have it be like this pixelated format, which doesn't matter, or you can intensify it and make it as real as possible. And I think that humans' instinctual desires to always view negative things as the most meaningful for us so we don't create the future how the past was. And so we take our most like negative moments about ourselves and we put it in the forefront of our minds and project out to the future and create this map in front of us so like we don't want to create that to have happen. And these things aren't aren't bad because in sometimes like they're actually pretty useful when you think about it. But when you're actually looking at the actual function of bringing all these aspects of your past and displaying it in front of you to make sure like that future present timeline doesn't match up with anything like any of the bad indicators of what your past is telling you then you'll just find that you're you're creating almost like sunglasses over top of your eyes with these large terrains of your future that you can barely actually see anything because everything has to meet an expectation a predefined condition of how the past was and how you don't want it to be and so i just don't think that these things are it's not that they're not real it's just that they're not beneficial and it's not an efficient structure to move through when you're just in your present moment going forward. So as much as possible, if you can delete all the versions of your past and just live like within that flat screen identity and interpret all the signs and signals of the, your current capacity right now, you'll find that in real time, you're always being given all the signs and signals that you need to do to move forward. And I think that if you just keep moving forward, keep moving forward, like a trailing mechanism, past will just like self automatically auto correct and you'll just like move forward in the direction of where you're supposed to go. And so the past didn't really matter because what happened five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, your frequency, like who you are, just has already transitioned into something brand new. And so the past is like there, it's sure, it's whatever, but it's not really a significant moment for you because. What's most significant is closest to that trailing of your current time and like current time plus one, plus two, plus three minutes ago, right? So if you're just following that array of time in this uh, smaller and smaller window, that's how you actually collapse the past, present, and future and just live totally within the present moment. And so these are some of the things I've been thinking about. It's kind of a, a computery way to process your reality, but it makes sense to me. So let me know if it makes sense to you.